So how many times have you found yourself here processing one of your favorite astrophotography photos? You've got your stars, you've got your image, but there's just more that you want to do to it, but you just really don't know what else to do. Well, that's when you need to unleash the power of Adobe Photoshop. We're going to start going over some real quick Photoshop tutorials here on the channel. And I think when you guys see enough of these and how powerful Photoshop really is, you might think about canceling that Netflix subscription and adding a monthly subscription of Adobe Photoshop to your debit card auto debit. We're going to start with a simple exercise today. And what we're going to do is we are going to load these images into Photoshop and we might play around with a few things, but what we're going to do is just show you the power of combining images and star screening. So of course in PixInsight, we've done everything that we needed to do. We have everything stretched, color corrected, all the kind of stuff that we want to do. But in Photoshop, what we're going to do is we're going to go to file. We're going to go to scripts and we are going to go to load files into stack here. We're going to go ahead and find those photos. We're going to select both of the photos that we want and we are going to click okay. And those are going to get loaded into Photoshop as two distinct layers down here, one on top of the other. What I want to do is drag this down and put the stars layer on top of my actual image. And just quickly, so we can see what's going on, we are gonna click on the stars layer to highlight it. And then right above that, where it says normal right now, we are gonna change the mode here to screen. And we do that, you can see that it is gonna combine both of the images together. And we can turn off the layer underneath it, or we can turn off the layer on top of it. The other thing that we can also do is we can add global adjustments to these, or we can add individual adjustments to adjust just the layer of the stars or the nebula itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a group here by hitting control G. We're going to double click on where it says group one, and we are just going to type in the word stars. And now we can press that button and you can see that we have our own little thing going on there. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on the layer below it. We're going to click on it. The image we are going to control G. We are going to create another group. We're going to double click on that and we'll just go ahead and call this image and we can collapse that. So now what we want to do is we want to highlight the stars group and we'll go ahead and expand that. And we're going to look up here and you can see that we've got all of these different little controls that we can add here. And what these are, are adjustments that we can add just to this stars layer. If we wanted to, we could also add adjustments that would do global kind of things, but let's just worry about the stars right now. So let's add a brightness and contrast. Let's add a levels. And let's also go and find a hue and saturation so we can play with our star color. We can click on the levels there. And now you can see we can literally start adjusting our levels on the stars to get them the perfect amount that we want. No more guessing or anything like that. We can literally dial these stars in exactly what we want. If we want them brighter, we can crank them up. We can go up here to the hue and saturation. We can basically make them even brighter. We can go ahead and change the color on the stars, adding more if we want to. We can change the hue. We can do anything that we want to. So let's go back to the levels and let's just dial those down a little bit more because that's what I want right there. And I'm pretty good with that. So we'll just go ahead and minimize that. Now let's click on our image and let's do the same thing. Let's go up here and let's add a levels adjustment. Let's add a curves adjustment. Let's also add a hue saturation adjustment. So now what we can do is we can turn off the stars by clicking the little eye right here and we can work on this image. I cropped this image after I did some really quick 
automatic background extraction so you can kind of see that everything here is a little bit off now we could fix this in a different way but it's out of scope for this actual video but if we want to we can try to just darken everything up and see if we can get rid of that any but you can see it's really going to affect the entire image we're not doing anything we still got that vignette going on right there but that's okay we can go ahead and just kind of turn it down a little bit if we want to try to make a little bit of a pleasing image here we can go to curves and then what we can do is just start pulling up on everything a little bit to try to bring that out a little bit and not worry so much about losing our nebula detail so that doesn't look too bad right there maybe pull down a little bit in the darker areas looks good to me if we want to we can go in and we can change the saturation we can increase the saturation we can decrease it we can do whatever we want here in photoshop and it is all simple and really easy to do i thought the saturation on that looked a little bit high so we can go ahead and pull that down and then with the click of a button we can add our stars back in now maybe the stars look a little bit too crazy we can go back into that stars group there and we can expand that up we can go into the levels adjustment again by double clicking and maybe we want to pull those down a little bit and maybe we've got just too much color into there maybe we need to take a little bit of color out of the stars as well and there we go we have an image that we just edited literally in Photoshop in no time. And we didn't even talk about going into the camera raw filter where we can really start to play with our image. We can do anything we want to do in camera wall. We can do noise reduction. We can do sharpening. We can make little changes to our exposure overall, contrast, highlights, temperature, whatever you want to do. There is also things in here that we can do to sharpen, reduce noise, and reduce color noise. So that is a quick little demonstration of just how powerful Adobe Photoshop is. Really simple, easy to use, these basic things for astrophotography, and this thing can really go off the rails to no extent. But I just feel that if you are not using Adobe Photoshop, and I am one of these people, that we are leaving so much on the table and we've got to fix that. And that is our goal to get that done. So we will talk to you guys later. Love you all. Peace.